The readings will now be given by Craig from New Jersey. The Bible. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Matthew And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Following the miscellaneous writings by Mary Baker Reddy. Excerpts from The Way. The present stage of progress in Christian science presents two opposite aspects a full orb promise, and a gaunt want. The need, however, is not of the letter, but the spirit. Less teaching and good healing is today the acme of well done, a healing that is not guesswork, 
chronic recovery, ebbing and flowing, but instantaneous cure. This absolute demonstration of science must be revived. To consummate this desideratum, mortal mind must pass through three stages of growth. First, self-knowledge. The physician must know himself and understand the mental state of his patient. Error found out is two-thirds destroyed, and the last third pierces itself, for the remainder only stimulates and gives scope to a higher demonstration. To strike out right and left against the mist never clears the vision, but to lift your head above it is a sovereign panacea. Mental darkness is a senseless error, neither intelligence nor power, and its victim is responsible for its suppositious presence. Cast the beam out of thine own eye. Learn what in thine own mentality is unlike the anointed, and cast it out, and then you will discern the error in thy patient's mind that makes his body sick and remove it and rest like the dove from the deluge. Physician, heal thyself. Let no clouds of sin gather and fall in mist and showers from thine own mental atmosphere. Hold thy gaze to the light and the iris of faith more beautiful than the rainbow seen from my window at the close of a balmy autumnal day will span thy heavens of thought. A radiant sunset, beautiful as blessings when they take their flight, dilates and kindles into rest. Thus will a life corrected Illumine its own atmosphere with spiritual glow and understanding. The pent-up elements of mortal mind need no terrible detonation to free them. Envy, rivalry, hate need no temporary indulgence that they may be destroyed through suffering. They should be stifled from lack of air and freedom. My students with cultured intellects, chastened affections, and costly hopes give promise of grand careers. But they must remember that the seed time is past, the harvest hour has come, and song should ascend from the mount of revelation sweeter than the sound of vintage bells. The seed of Christian science, which when sought was least of all seeds, has sprung up, borne fruit, and the birds of the air, the uplifted desires of the human heart, have lodged in its branches. Now let my faithful students carry the fruit of this tree into the rock ribs nest of the raven's callow brood. The second stage of mental development is humility. This virtue triumphs over flesh. It is the genius of Christian science. One can never go up until he has gone down in his own esteem. Humility is lens and prism to the understanding of mind healing. It must be had to understand our textbook. It is indispensable to personal growth and points out the chart of its divine principle and rule of practice. Cherish humility, watch, and pray without ceasing or you will miss the way of truth and love. Humility is no busybody. It has no moments for trafficking in other people's business. 
No place for envy, no time for idle words, vain amusements, and all the etc. of the ways and means of personal sense. The third stage of mental growth is manifested in love, the greatest of all stages and states of being. Love that is irrespective of self, rank, or following. For some time, it has been clear to my thought that those students of Christian science whose Christian characters and lives recommend them should receive full fellowship from us. No matter who has taught them, if they've been taught wrongly, they are not morally responsible for this and need special help. They are as lambs that have sought the true fold and the great shepherd and strayed innocently. Hence, we should be ready and glad to help them and point the way. Divine love is the substance of Christian science, the basis of its demonstration, yea, its foundation and superstructure. Love impels good works. Love is greatly needed, must be had to mark the way in Christian science. The student who heals by teaching and teaches by healing will graduate under divine honors, which are the only appropriate seals for Christian science. State honors perish, and their gain is loss to the Christian scientists. Human pride is human weakness. Self-knowledge and humility and love are divine strength. Christ's vestures are put on only when mortals are washed in the blood of the Lamb. We must walk in the way which Jesus marked out if we would reach the heaven-crowned summit of Christian science.